you guys have been asking me when I post pictures about my uh, coffee table terrarium. I wanted to do one for a while, but I wanted to find, I sort of had a vision of what I wanted. So I was at a thrift store in San Francisco and I found what was a, a display case. And I think I bought it for like $20 and I turned it into a coffee table terrarium, or as my husband calls it, the dirt table. Um, he was trying to explain it to me. He's like, well, you know, your dirt table. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. He's like, you know, the, the coffee table. So we uh, call it the dirt table. Um, so, you know, display cases, they were, it was about, I think about maybe four feet high. So the only thing I had to do for it was cut the legs down. I did sand it and um, restain it because I didn't like the color of it. And then inside it was lined with felt and it had some um, lighting. So I ripped that all apart. It's what I wanted to do here and I'm going to open it up so we could see is I had to waterproof it, of course. And so that's it's got the windows or glass all around it. And so I just used clear a sealant and placed it around the windows in the wood. And then I had to waterproof the bottom. So I took this, I guess it's aluminum ceiling tape. I don't know what the technical term is. And then I just put that along the gaps. And then I took, just ignore the cats. I took Flex Seal, which I, is a waterproofing. And I did one coat, let it dry. And then I did another coat. And I was a little concerned about maybe any chemicals coming up through it, but um, it's pretty stable. And that was it. And then it was time to, then it was time to, plant and I'm not dealing with a lot of deep space so sometimes when you do a terrarium you see where you could add like gravel and charcoal I actually never use gravel or rocks on any of my terrariums and I actually don't use charcoal you could use charcoal if you're afraid of overwatering, um, but I, I just didn't use any of that because I need as much depth of soil as possible because it was already so shallow. Um, the soil that I use for terrariums is a one part peat moss, one part perlite, and then one part sand. So it just happens to be the carnivorous mixture that we use for our carnivorous plants at work, but it works really well for terrariums because it holds moisture, but still allows some drainage. So I just put that in, in, in of course, in here and packed it down. And then was the fun part was choosing the plants. And uh, I was afraid of low light conditions because this was gonna be the coffee table. It was gonna be away from windows, but I have a south facing window and an east facing window and a north facing window. So most terrarium plants are already pretty low light. And with that exposure, there was enough light. If you're worried about your terrarium coffee table, not get enough light, you could just you know put a supplemental a light on it, even fluorescent light or even just any household light. Um, I started with a mixture of cuttings and of potted already rooted plants. Cuttings work because this is pretty much like creating a greenhouse environment. You take a cutting, the soil moisture is perfect. It's a great media. And then of course you close it and it acts like a greenhouse. So sometimes cuttings are the best or if that's the only way you could get plants. And then I also bought some plants online that are under terrarium plants. You know, you could find them all online. I have a mixture of, here, I'll show you. Um, let's see, I have a Peperomia caparata. Uh, this one's getting a little tall, so it's getting a little squished. Um, so I'll just, you know, pinch some leaves off. This is a Geoanthus, and this one I think is Geoanthus papagee. Hope I pronounced that right. It's a great plant. And then I have the Philodendron brantiatum. It's a uh, trailing philodendron with these cute heart-shaped leaves. Selaginella, right, loves moisture. Um, of course, the good old nerve plant, which is Photonia. Uh, Cryptanthus. Cryptanthus is a bromeliad family, and most bromeliads are epiphytic, and they don't grow in soil, but this one does great in wetter soils. So I have some uh, variety of those. Variety of begonias. Not all begonias will handle a terrarium environment. Sometimes it's just too wet for them. And I added some driftwood. And let's see what else I have. Uh, just a, a mishmash of plants. Not everything worked out, of course. Some things are going to take over. I think the selaginella may take over. I've had this for about a year, year, year and a half now. Um, and I'm really happy with it. And I've only watered it twice. So that's the thing is when you get a terrarium set up, that's the whole idea is that it's an enclosed sort of ecosystem. 
I used bottled water. We have really bad water where I live. It's on a well, so there's harsh minerals. So I just wet, completely wet the substrate. And then of course, when you close it, I'm gonna close it, you know, it acts like a greenhouse. Now, one way to tell if it's an underwatered or overwatered is normally I, 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 I clean this off for you guys so you could see through it, but there is a slight, you know, condensation on it. You don't want that condensation on any of your terrariums to be running down and dripping. That's a sign there's too much moisture. You should have a nice like sort of fog covering. Um, it's not so much that you can't see into it, so that's nice. And if you do put too much water in there, a turkey baster is a really good way of getting water out when you can't, you know, pour it out. Or you could just leave it open and then of course the water is going to evaporate. But you should see that light condensation on your terrarium. If you don't see that, then you need to add water. As far as fertilizing, um, the soil had enough nutrients in it that I haven't had to fertilize it yet. I'm, I'm down the road, I will. And like I said, of course, everything doesn't isn't going to work. Some things are going to get too big. Some things are already pushing up against the glass, but I'll just take, you know, cut that piece off. Like I'll probably just cut, you know, this piece off right here, and then I'll just probably stick it in a bare spot and it'll root. Um, so yeah, it's really fun. I'm really happy that I found this. I knew I wanted to do this. So I'm gonna see if I could get my father-in-law to build me more, or I've been looking at more thrift stores to find um, more because it, it actually has worked out better than, I, better than I thought. Everyone loves it, so I'm having fun with it. So hopefully that answered some of your questions about my coffee table terrarium, thanks.